Welcome back guys. Since getting the motor bolted in the last video, I've went ahead and buttoned up a few odds and ends. We've got the starter bolted in, we've got the shifter cables installed and aligned, we've got the axles bolted in, the rear drive shaft, and the dog bone mount on the bottom. Also, as mentioned in a previous video, I measured for the belt length with string. Uh, the first attempt was way too short. I couldn't even get it on all the pulleys with the adjuster all the way out. Uh, so I went back, I got a longer one, which I thought was going to work out perfect. And it turns out it's tight when the adjustment is all the way maxed out. So I think I'm going to go back and get one that's in between the two sizes, and that should work out great. So we went ahead and get the driver's seat out, the steering wheel, harness, and the dash out of the way. So I'm sure this is going to be a much anticipated video, as a lot of people have uh, asked questions and reached out where I got this and how it was to install and how it works and I just I haven't got it installed yet so there's a lot of questions that I haven't been able to answer but this is where I got everything from uh, epowersteering.com this is their straight kit um, comes with the uh, electric unit from uh, Saturn View or a Chevy Equinox and it comes with a 60 amp fuse power wire pigtail, your uh, steering control unit, control box, and your knob that controls your um, resistance. So the kit comes with these couplers here, which I'd already welded onto the U-joint right here. And I cut up the column and I took this chunk out and welded the coupler on here. Uh, you'll see how it all slides together uh, later on when we get to it. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to my Instagram that shows uh, in detail with pictures how all that was done. Now for mounting, you can see I cut a lot off of the dash reinforcement. Uh, I made these brackets here, welded them in place when I had the control unit taped in position to the main bar to get everything kind of lined up and then welded those brackets to the dash bar with everything held in place. And also for mounting, I had to lathe this little spacer uh, nut right here, weld a nut on it, lathe this spacer too, weld a nut on the end to make this long custom bolt and this custom nut because this all thread uh, quarter inch was too small to fit in here and the next size all thread was too big. So I made these spacers here to kind of make up the difference see it slides in. So now we can get all these components mounted in their place and the next step after that would be moving on to getting it wired so we can play with it and see how well it works. So now you can see how everything mounts. Uh, this bracket bolts to the end of the clutch pedal to secure it. And one thing I noticed is I forgot about the clutch switch so I had to go back and notch it right here to get this to clip in. It's super tight but it clips in, everything's out of the way. So this bracket that I just welded in, all nice and ugly like, since I don't care because it's behind the dash. Uh, is what bolts or secures the uh, control module. So this is the main power and ground for the motor and it plugs in to the control here. This is the main power and ground for the control unit. And it goes there. This will go to um, 12 volt power the battery or whatnot, and this is just goes to the ground. Probably go to here, actually, since I left the nuts on when I painted it, 
So it's just bare metal. Real convenient spot to ground it. Maybe I'll grind some bare metal back behind here and just ground it straight to the bar. Um, and then we have the control box wiring here. This plug plugs in. Goes right here. So then we have this red and black. We have switched power and ground. And then our yellow and gray here goes to the yellow and gray here, which is your sensitivity knob for the power assist. Um, I'm either going to put it on the dash about in this area, or I may mount it on the steering wheel um, just to keep it within reach with tight harnesses. Make it convenient and I don't have to make sure it's adjusted right before I cinch myself down. With the major steering components in place, I can start with the wiring now. Got a terminal set from Amazon, some heat shrink tube from the local parts store, and this braided nylon covering off Amazon too. Uh, I got sizes from quarter inch all the way to one inch in 25 foot rolls. Hopefully it'll be enough to do the whole car. Uh, and of course I had to be a little extra and get the red accent. So got the wiring for the motor covered and the connector put on it. We got the wiring for the steering ECU cut back to length with a connector on it and the control box covered. I depinned this plug that was already on it so I can get the covering on it. Cut this to length. Uh, this will be the power and ground for the control box. And left this one as long as I could and put the connector on it for the control knob here. Um, I can't do this half of it until I put the dash back in and figure out where I'm going to mount it. But all this done, we can put it back in, get it wired up and get the dash in it so I can locate where I want to put the knob here. Alright guys, we've got the wiring pretty much buttoned up for the electric steering assist. Um, all we have left to do is wire in the sensitivity adjustment knob, the main power and ground for the ECU, and the switch power and ground for the control box. To do that though, we need to tie it into the main body harness, and I still have to completely go through that harness and get rid of all the wiring that is unneeded. So here's the main body harness. It's everything except for the engine harness. Uh, I'm going to lay it out on the floor in the same orientation that would be in the car to help me identify which plugs go where and make it easier to uh, remove all the wiring that I don't need. You know, like everything for uh, headliner, sunroof, this car doesn't have that anymore. Um, all the airbag stuff's coming out, uh, all the radio wiring, speaker wiring. Uh, all that stuff that this car is just not going to need, I'm going to remove from the harness before putting it in the car. To deep in all the wiring, this Matco Universal Terminal Kit has by far been the best tool that I've uh, bought for this. I've used cheaper stuff in the past, but they just didn't efficiently remove the wiring like this stuff does. Um, everything is high quality, real strong, uh, real strong pins on the end. So they don't bend and flex like the cheaper stuff does. Uh, there's really only maybe two or three of these needed for uh, the Volkswagen harness. The rest is just going to be all your other makes and models. But uh, the full kit wasn't very expensive, so it's definitely a good investment. All right, this is the main wiring harness for the car. From engine bay all the way to the rear hall decks and taillights. Now comes the task of identifying all the plugs and figuring out what we can keep and what we don't need. Uh, the first easy, easily identified uh, plugs to remove are going to be the airbag plugs. On every vehicle, airbag system plugs are always going to be yellow. So looking at the harness, we got yellow plugs here, 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 the main one up there, down this side also. So we're going to have our rear impact sensors here, and here, front impact sensors there, there. Um, these are gonna be uh, sensors for the seat and seat belts. This is going to be the seat belt tensioner uh, trigger wire. 
for the driver's seat, passenger seat over here. This one probably, what would that one be for? Um, oh, that's the passenger dash airbag. This is the main plug for the airbag control module. Uh, the front impact sensor on the driver's side. Um, driver, or the steering wheel airbag. Actually, no, that will go into the, the clock spring. So we may need to keep some of these wires for the steering angle sensor. We'll have to dig into that. Uh, it could also be a different plug. Um, I'll just have to grab the clock spring and see if there's one plug or uh, multiple plugs. We'll start by removing all of the wiring covering to get to all the wires and start depinning all of the airbag plugs out of it. So I wanted to show how I depin these wires. Um, every plug is going to have this purple lock on it. Each one is going to be a little bit different. This one has an arrow right here and that's going to be basically telling you which direction you need to slide it to lock it. So you need to slide it the other way to unlock it and you should hear it click. So that moves everything over and unlocks the wiring. So now you can use your tools to depin it and these just press in, give it a jiggle to release the barbs that hold it in and then your wiring should just pull out. I don't know if you can see it, but right here's a barb and right here. So this tool just slides over it and presses those in to release it, to pull it out. So all the wiring left in the dash area, so we got a 12 volt power source, hazard switch, traction control switch. These go to the factory gauges. We got our um, yaw sensor here. Uh, was that either wiper stock, turn signal, ignition switch, steering angle sensor, ground, convenience module, comfort module, whatever you want to call it, gas pedal, brake switch, clutch switch, uh, ignition lock switch. We got part of the uh, main relay and fuse panel here. Fuses, more relays here, headlights, uh, interior light dimmer switch, and that's pretty much it for under the dash. And then we come through, this is the firewall grommet. This is going to get removed and I'll have uh, some bulkhead connectors to take care of this part of the loom out into the front of the body. And also these go up through the rain tray and connect here for this part of the harness. This car had this small fuse block on top of the battery from the factory. Uh, it got its power directly from the battery here, which powers this whole side of the block. And then this is where the alternator wired up. This is where uh, the power wire for the interior uh, relay panel came from. This was for the fan module that I just showed you was completely removed, that whole system. Uh, this one was for the fuel pump, and this one, uh, the secondary air, which is deleted. I decided to go with the, uh, the AIM MXG 7-inch dash display, and I think the coolest feature about this is using uh, these two wires here, it's the factory CAN system. Uh, this is basically the communication line between every module in the car. Um, it goes to the comfort module, uh, to the ECU, um, everything is connected to it, the gauges, everything. It's basically your, your link to talk to everything through the OBD2 port. But also, I can hook this up to this uh, dash display and will then read every bit of information that the ECU reads. All the sensors on the motor will display on here through these two wires. There's still a ton more work to do in this wiring harness. Uh, it's 
hours and hours of just sorting through wires, looking at wiring diagrams, trying to make sure I'm not pulling the wrong wires. If this is something that you guys want to tackle on your own cars, make sure you spend enough time um, looking over the wiring diagrams on a quality uh, book like a Bentley manual or something similar. Um, just look over it and get a good grasp of what you're doing before you start because if you pull the wrong wire or remove something that should have stayed it's going to take you two, three, four times longer to figure out which wire should have stayed versus just making sure you didn't pull it in the first place. But with so much left to do, um, you know, wrap everything up with some nice loom and uh, put some extra plugs on there for serviceability. Um, and if you guys are interested, just keep watching and uh, catch you on the next video.